Hi, Pam here from Creative Homescaping. Today I'm going to participate in a tag from Nikki at At Home with Nikki called My Forever Home. And I'm going to share a few items that I think will always be in my home no matter where I am living and no matter how long I am staying there. So let's get started. My first forever item in my house, and actually it's three items, is this large bird and these two topiaries that I got from Pier One. I found these topiaries on a clearance sale in the fall after um, they were clearing out their summer decor and getting ready for the fall decor. And then I saw this bird. And I love cute birds, and you'll probably see that in some of my other videos, but this is a very large bird. Um, uh, it's probably about a foot from the base up to its head. And I will zoom in on it. And it just had the most adorable expression on its face and I don't know why, I just could not resist this bird. So the next item that I will have in my forever home is this silver teapot. And there's an interesting story behind this. My maternal grandmother was an immigrant from Finland. And she, when she came to this country, she didn't speak English at all. She only spoke Finnish. She learned how to speak English, but um, her whole life, she ended up working as a housekeeper. So if you hear that noise in the background, I'm sorry, that's my dishwasher. Um, so when she came to this country, she got work as a housekeeper. Well, in one of the homes that she worked in, they were going to throw away this teapot because it was black from tarnish. Nobody had been keeping it up. And so it had turned completely black. And right now this one needs to be um, polished a little bit. It's looking somewhat black because it's on the, this dark table. But, um, and you can see my reflection in there as I'm holding it up. But uh, it actually is fairly uh, well polished right now. You just can't tell because it's, it's uh, close to that black. So I moved it back on the white so it looks a little crisper. But this teapot was black and so she asked them it, since they were pl planning on just throwing it away, if she could take it. And they told her that she could. And according to my mother, my grandmother spent uh, several hours polishing this teapot with the same silver polish I use today, uh, right silver cream. And uh, she got this teapot to look almost brand new. Now there might be a couple little dings and dents here, but um, for the most part, it looks very nice. And you can see it has a lot of scroll work along the spout. It has these um, ridges built into it. It does have this monogram on it. It's a little hard to tell, but right here, it's either, I think it's an M for the name of the family. And then the handle has some scroll work on it. <laughs> Like I said, it's the, it's not doing it justice because it's reflecting a lot of the dark wood that's around. And then the back has the same uh, fluting on it. And then at the top, it has this nice little handle and it opens up like that. So because my grandmother uh, put so much effort into this to make this look beautiful again, uh, this is an item that I will always cherish. The next items I plan on having in my home forever are these dishes. They are Sango Avignon 48.55, and there's a nice story behind these as well. Um, these I've had for many, many years. I had originally seen them in a Ross Simons catalog, and I thought they were just beautiful. They were very French country looking. Um, I loved French country style but I didn't want to buy them because I had a set of dishes. So um, along comes my anniversary and my husband gives me a present and when I open it up it was this set of dishes and I was so, so shocked because I hadn't even told him that I really liked these dishes. 
he had looked in the same catalog and he knew my taste and he knew I loved dishes and he went ahead and bought them for me for my anniversary. So they came with um, this soup bowl with a yellow rim around it, a dinner plate, um, a cup and saucer, and the cup has flowers of different colors on all sides. And then the saucer actually can be used as a bread and butter plate if you want it to, um, because it's blue all the way around. And then this is the um, salad plate. And then it also came with a serving bowl and a round platter. And I was just so thrilled to get this set of dishware from my husband and it means the world to me that he picked it out for me. The next item I think I'll have in my forever home is the bed in our master bedroom. And I'll kind of do a top to bottom pan because it's hard to get this in the whole frame at one time. There we go. So this bed was the uh, first more expensive piece of furniture that my husband and I bought together as a married couple. And it has this wrought iron scroll work at the top. I'll get a little closer so you can see it. And it's kind of a, a uh, pickled oak color. It's a little... It's getting a little washed out in this frame. It's not quite as white as it appears. It has a little more tan in it. And this, as I mentioned, this was one of the first pieces we bought when we got married. And I really love this bed. When I was a little girl, I wanted a four-poster bed. A lot of my friends had the white four-poster beds that they sell for children. And I didn't get one. I just had a bed. I didn't even have a headboard. It just had one of those metal frames on it. And when I saw this one, I just really fell in love with it because it was the French country style that I really like. And so I don't, I can't see myself ever getting rid of this. So I started with the newest item that I think I'll have in my forever home. And this is probably the oldest item I think I'll have in my forever home. Um, although I don't know that for certain that silver teapot might have been as well. And I have not owned this piece for very long. Um, this is a an old fashioned Singer sewing machine. It belonged to my great grandmother. And it is an antique. Um, it's over a hundred years old and I'll show you some details on it as I move closer. So it has these drawers on the side that have scroll work on them. And then here's the treadle mechanism with a lot of scroll work on it. You can see the curtains I hung the other day. And then on the sides of it, it also has some scroll detail. And then I'm going to open up the top. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So the top lifts up from the side like this. I can't put it all the way down because I have a chair sitting here. And then this piece right here lifts up. And then you can pull the, uh, the sewing machine up. And I need to use both hands for this because you have to pull it up with one hand and push this flap down with the other. So I'm going to do that and then I'll resume filming. Okay, so here you can see what I'm saying. I pushed the flap back down and now here's the sewing machine pulled out. And it has this beautiful um, gold scroll work design on it and on the machine itself. And there's a very old spool of thread on here. And then here's the hand wheel and then the reason I know it's over a hundred years old is because I don't know if you can see right here 
these dates and try to zoom in as close as I can. But the the earliest date on here is 1900, but the latest date is 1903. Thank you for joining me here today at Creative Homescaping. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button down below and also clicking on the notification bell so that you'll get notified when I post new videos. I'd also like to thank Nikki at At Home with Nikki for posting this and suggesting other people post the same tag as well. Please tune in again for another episode of Creative Homescaping. Bye-bye!